few months ago, I flew to Singapore to attend the 2024 Singapore Air Show. As it was my first time visiting an international air show, I was really excited to see the aerial demonstrations, as well as the static displays and trade booths. Before we get into the trip report, I'd like to share a montage highlighting some of my favorite moments of the air show. Ready to go. Check out this view. After spending some quality time in Singapore, my next stop on the trip was Hong Kong. After staying a night at the Crown Plaza Airport Hotel, it was time to kick off another flight. Hi, I'm Alvin for One More Week To Go, and today you're joining me here at Singapore Changi Airport, Terminal 3. Today I'll be taking a flight from Singapore to Hong Kong on board Singapore Airlines on their Airbus A380 in business class. After a super early wake up, we checked out at the Crown Plaza Airport Hotel at 6 in the morning. From the hotel, it was a short walk to the Singapore Airlines check-in counters, where there was a short 10 minute queue for check-in. Immigration was a breeze. It's all automated. You simply slide in your passport, walk through two gates while looking at a camera and your airside. We had a bunch of time before our flight, so we did some souvenir snack shopping, picking up some salted egg fish skin from Irvin's and some pork jerky, before heading to the Singapore Airlines Silver Crisp Lounge. Just sat down at the Singapore Airlines lounge, got a nice private pod spot for Peterson and I. Gonna go grab some drinks and food at the buffet, uh, cool down a bit. The shirt is really hot. And we have about two hours until boarding. The Silvercrest Lounge, located in Terminal 3, is the main lounge for Singapore Airlines business class passengers. It's a huge lounge with plenty of seating to choose from, including dining tables, bar seating, armchairs, sofas, or more private pods. The food and beverage options are extensive, from Western to more traditional local Singapore cuisine. You're sure to find something for you. My personal favorite at this lounge is the noodle station where they serve laksa. You must get the laksa noodles if you come to this lounge. I 
I was really tempted to order another bowl after finishing the first, but I had to resist. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had appetite for my meal on board. After relaxing in the lounge for two hours, it was time to head over to our gate for security and boarding. From the Silver Chris Lounge, it was about a 10 minute walk to our gate, B7. As some of you probably know, at Singapore Changi Airport, you have to go through security at the gate. While I know this has some pretty big advantages in terms of airport operation, I wish they would have provided washrooms that you can use inside. This Singapore Airlines Airbus A380 will be taking us to Hong Kong today. This is the second time I've flown on Singapore's A380. The first time was on a Fifth Freedom route from Frankfurt to New York. Boarding for this flight was probably one of the messiest that I've ever seen. There was no signage, no clear announcement of which zone was boarding, and only one staff member standing at the door looking just as confused as everyone else. It was chaos. I would have never expected this at Singapore. Anyway, we'll be boarding the upper deck of the A380. With the exception of six first class suites in the front, the rest of the upper deck is all business class. There are three business class cabins. The main one is the largest with 13 rows, followed by a smaller cabin for the back with five rows, and an even smaller mini cabin at the back with two rows, all configured in a one-to-one layout. Morning. Here's my seat for the flight, 23A, a window seat near the back of the main business class cabin. The cabin was lit up in a soft purple mood lighting which complemented the seats really nicely. This aircraft features Singapore's latest and greatest business class seats, as do the rest of the A380s in the fleet. Upon settling in, I immediately noticed the difference between these seats and the older Singapore seats. This one definitely felt more spacious, and while you still have to angle yourself a bit to use the leg rest, it didn't feel as awkward. The styling also looked nicer and more refined. this A380, there are only overhead bins down the middle, which made the cabin feel really spacious. Cabin temperature was perfect as well. Good morning to you. Hi, Please morning. Be careful Thank you. Steaming. While we're slowly taxiing our way out for departure, let's go through the seat features. Directly in front is an 18-inch touchscreen TV. On the left is a coat hook. And below that, a compartment to hold small personal items, such as your phone. A pillow, mattress pad, and blanket are provided. Besides the pillow, I didn't use them as it was such a short flight. As mentioned earlier, the leg rest is at an angle, so you do have to angle your body slightly to use it, which could get uncomfortable during a longer flight. But I didn't have any issues with it on this 3 hour flight. To the left of the leg rest is the literature pocket and some storage space. You'll find here the Wi-Fi guide, safety card, duty-free magazine, the menu, the headphones, and the sickness bag. 
to the safety card located in the seat pocket in front of you for more information. On behalf of Singapore Airlines, we hope you have a great time on board as well as in Singapore or anywhere else in the world we take you. Above the side table is a vanity mirror that flips open. Up to the side, you'll find an adjustable reading light. Along the back is the headphone jack and a USB charging port. Not quite sure what that big empty space is for, it seems like there should be something there. The side table itself is a decent size. Here you'll find the IFE controller. You'll find the seat controls along the edge of the side table, which were easy to use. On these seats, you no longer need to physically stand up to put the seat into the lie flat bed mode. Between the side table and the literature pocket is a flap that opens up to reveal a tap payment interface and a universal power outlet. On each side of the seat, a little flap can be deployed to act as an armrest. The side table comes out with the press of this button. Then you can simply swing it out in front of you. The table is very sturdy, can slide forward and backward, as well as sideways to give you more room if you need to step out into the aisle. Once we reached cruising altitude, I connected my phone to the onboard Wi-Fi network. Complimentary Wi-Fi is provided to all suites and business class passengers, or if you are a Chris Flyer member. 
before meal service began, I went to check out the lavatories. There are a total of five lavatories shared across the three business class cabins, four of which are located just a row behind me, and one at the very back of the plane. The lavatories are pretty well stocked with amenities, including dental kits, razors, shaving cream, napkins, paper cups, as well as the Penhaligon's Quirkus line of hand cream and facial mist. I also love that the waste bin is foot pedal controlled. After my visit to the lavatories, the crew were already coming down the aisle with the meal service, so let's take a look at the menu. Before we get to the food, you can see that some in-flight amenities are available by request. For this flight, the amenity kit is not available as the flight is under 6 hours. Feel free to pause the video if you need to read the menu in detail. Singapore's in-flight entertainment system looks great and is very intuitive to use. I really appreciated that they made it touchscreen, as the older product was not. Swiping around is responsive and you can find a huge variety of movies, TV shows, music and games to pass the time. The flight map is fully interactive, but the choice of views was a bit more limited than some other airlines that I've flown. Today's flight will take just over 3 hours, taking off from Singapore, flying northeast past Ho Chi Minh, over the South China Sea, and touching down in Hong Kong after 2,737 kilometers. To fully enjoy the IV, of course I need to use the noise cancelling headphones. The ear cups were quite plush and comfortable on my head. Sound quality was good. When not in use, you can hang them on this headphone holder beside the reading light. I forgot to show this earlier, but there's actually a ton of space underneath the seat and leg rest to put random things like shoes, blankets, and bags. At this point, I was getting pretty hungry and excited about my pre-ordered lobster meal. Oh yes, thank you. Welcome. Pretty soon, the crew came by to set my tray table for meal service. Okay, here you go. Thank you. Do you have any juices or a cup of coffee or tea? Can I get a coffee as well as a Royal Sparkle? Royal Sparkle, I have to come back to you Sure, shortly. thank you. And no sugar. Is there anything I put right here? Thank you. Thank you. Please thank enjoy. You. We have the pink croissant, the croissant with chocolate. Uh, just the croissant. Yeah. Croissant. Oh, uh, this is a bolo pao. Oh, can I try that as well? Of course. Yeah. But it's different from the bolo pao from Hong Kong. Oh, okay. I'll try it anyway. <laughs> as this was a morning flight, the meal service was a breakfast. So for starters, a fresh fruit and yogurt were served. For the bread, I got a croissant and a pineapple bun, or what I call a bolo pao. The crew told me it was different from the bolo pao's in Hong Kong, but I thought I'd give it a try anyway. I also somehow accidentally ended up with way too many drinks. I got a coffee, a royal sparkle mocktail, an orange juice, and a water. Let's just say I had to use the lavatories quite a bit after this meal. Relatively simple. It's like the pineapple crust. Not bad.
As I was eating, my IV decided to crash and restart on me. But after it rebooted, I started watching Top Gun again for probably the fourth time. Never gets old. As I was enjoying the movie, my lobster thermidor was served. This meal option is only available if you pre-order via Singapore Airlines Book the Cook service. It's not always available on Singapore's routes, but it usually is when you fly out of Singapore. As expected, the lobster was absolutely delicious. The meat was tender and flavorful, while the sauce was rich and creamy. It's really impressive that they can serve this on a plane. All right, let's give this a try. Lobster Thermidor. So I had this once before, and it was really good. So that wasn't flying out of Singapore. So let's see if this one um, is any different. It's really good. I think this one's better than the, the last one I had. There wasn't any dessert dish provided for this meal service, which was a bit disappointing even though it is marketed as breakfast. It just doesn't feel like a full service meal without the dessert. Although I wasn't planning on sleeping, I tried putting the seat into the lie flat bed mode anyway just to try it out. I like that you didn't have to stand up or ask the crew for assistance to go between the bed and lounge positions, which is the case for the older Singapore seat. Aside from the legroom feeling a bit more restricted, the shoulder and headroom felt sufficient for me. With just about an hour and a half to go, I continued watching Top Gun and relaxed for the remainder of the flight to Hong Kong. After landing, it felt like we had the longest taxi ever, from one corner of the airport to the other. As we landed on the new runway out by the ocean, 07 left, we taxied past the massive construction project underway at Hong Kong Airport to build the new terminal. In the distance, you can see the relatively new sky bridge that I made a separate video for on my channel. Up until this flight, I hadn't been back to Hong Kong for many years. So seeing the Hong Kong airport tower, the rows of Cathay tails, and the airport itself made me feel quite emotional to be back here. As we near the end of the video, it's time to offer my thoughts on Singapore's A380 business class. I do much prefer the newer Singapore business class product to the old one. The seat feels much more improved in terms of design and storage space. While you still have to sit at an angle to use the legroom, it feels less awkward, and the ability to switch between the lounging and lie flat modes without standing up is much welcome. The service from the crew was top notch as usual, and the lobster thermidor was delicious. However, the meal did feel a bit lacking in terms of appetizer and dessert. Finally, a minor complaint I have as a photographer is that the double layer A380 windows are really difficult to take photos out of. So if you're someone who loves looking out the window and snapping photos during the flight, keep that in mind. And that's all for this one. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel and help me make more videos, the best way to do that is to leave a like and hit the subscribe button to let the YouTube algorithm overlords know to promote this video to more viewers. If you're looking for more ways to support my work, you can check out my Patreon page or my YouTube membership offers. Thanks for watching, happy travels, and I'll see you in the next one.